There were Yiddish schools. I attended one of those Yiddish schools. There was also a Hebrew school, the Tarbut school. There were other Jewish schools. And then the, the majority of, of kids of my generation that were Jewish belonged to one of those Yiddish schools. We went from kindergarten to high school with the very same kids. You know, my class probably had between uh, 70 and 90 kids. They came from uh, mostly the big neighborhoods where the Jews lived. Uh, Colonia del Valle and Alamos had by then already evolved into other neighborhoods, Polanco and Tecamachalco, and those Jews uh, sent their kids to this, to this uh, old Yiddish shule. Uh, we came from the south, and uh, there, there might have been two or three kids all together, all together that were not Jew, non-Jews, that were the children of the janitors. And again, for me, as in the case of Inez and Vicky, they were always very interesting, very attractive, very enigmatic and mysterious figures because they were not part of the norm. Yiddish uh, school was in Yiddish. We went, uh, we went in Yiddish, uh, we learned history and we learned uh, uh, the civics and we, we learned certain disciplines in Yiddish. And there was also Spanish classes that were done uh, in school. Yiddish was both a language of instruction and it was an ideology. The ideology of Yiddish was in many ways our religion. We were not affiliated, or if we were affiliated, we were secular Jews. This is Jews who didn't think that you needed to uh, pray every, every day or every Friday and Saturday in order to show your, your commitment to your religion. But the language, Yiddish, and through the language, the whole culture of Eastern Europe was our religion in that we felt that we were part of a chain of generations, that the... the the history that had started in biblical times with the destruction of the first and second temple through the, you know, the, the medieval times, the expulsion of the Jews from Spain, Zionism, the Holocaust, arrived to us and we were the link that was going to make it to have a future. And so even in classes that were not in Yiddish, the sense was that we needed to understand the, the Jewishness of our past in order to be a, a part of that continuity. And, and in retrospect, what is so decisive and so crucial to me is the absence of, of Zionism. I was born again in 1961, and I went to school up until 1978, 1970, 1978. And uh, you know, those, that from 1948, Onwards, the, the period of the emergence of the State of Israel is a, is a decisive one in Jewish history. And uh, even though we had Hebrew classes, even though the story of Israel was very much a part of our instruction, of our education, the Yiddishists really sustained the bastion, defended the, the barracks, so that Yiddish would uh, not give place to Hebrew and to a, a, an Israel or Zionist-oriented ideology that would erase what had happened in Eastern Europe altogether and the Holocaust. It wasn't until I left school in the late 70s that uh, the instruction in Yiddish became, in the eyes of many, many that were now sending their kids that were probably a little bit older than I was, uh, but had already established their own families. An anachronism, why teach them Yiddish if Yiddish is no longer a language that is spoken anywhere in, anywhere in the world? And um, letters and letters were dying or were retiring, and it was difficult to replace them. And the option was to start bringing shlichim, to start bringing mores and morot from Israel that would replace them by teaching Hebrew. But through Hebrew, by teaching the whole history of Israel and, and, the, and the vision of, of what Israel was about. And so I would say that it was in the last five or six years of my Yiddish language instruction in school that Yiddish started losing gravitas and, and Hebrew started arriving.